was to dis-wow the tornado. Nice, spins easy. Hi, do you like cars and have extreme OCD? Well, I got a video in store for you. No? I should do like used vacuum cleaner sales commercials. That's my future career ambition. I'm gonna sell used things that suck. Anyway, if you're new to the channel and you did not see the last video I did on Mr. Dose here, my 91 MR2 turbo project car, up there is a link that'll get you caught up when I drop the fuel tank on it. My goals for today are I'm going to install a brand new Denso fuel pump that is for a Mark IV Supra Turbo that is actually an upgrade for this MR2. And I'm going to steam clean the ever living shit out of the underneath of this car before I put it all back together. Ouch. I have a few more things to address under the hood here. Or not really a hood, it's a trud. It's a trunk hood, it's a trud. I'll tell you what was harder than removing the fuel tank from this car is removing these two coolant lines for the heater core. That was an absolute nightmare. It took like two and a half hours to pull those two hoses out. Lines. I had to cut the hoses in the front. I'll show you. I couldn't get them off just by pulling them off and it was going to damage the tube. So I cut them and I was actually able to order them. Amazon Prime. There has to be a better way to engineer this. This is ridiculous. Oof. Oh no! Oh god, it looks like automotive diarrhea. Good thing I'm doing this, that's gross. I know some of you are probably wondering why I'm inflicting this much torture upon myself by pulling those out of there, but uh, one of them's cracked. These two lines right here are attached by the firewall in the engine bay, and this guy right here was leaking where this bracket is attached to this pipe. It's a factory defect I guess a lot of these cars have. I just bought this little steamy guy on Amazon to steam clean everything and anything I possibly can. And I just did the outside of the fuel tank with it. And in combination of using this with a pressure washer, it looks brand new now. This thing is the heat. <laughs> My jokes are so abysmal, it's not even funny. I'm gonna do everything under the car that I possibly can with this now. And it's gonna be a big time lapse for me not that long for you and I'll see you tomorrow. start installing some parts. The steam cleaner did an all right job on stuff like this under the car that wasn't too nasty. You can see there's still some glue residue though, but I'm gonna rebond those pads back to where they should be. As far as under the car goes, I wasn't really satisfied with how that came out. I was thinking the steam cleaner was the ultimate solution for getting under the carriage of the car clean and getting that old like grime and grease crud off the bottom of the car, but it didn't really work that great. And this is not the fuel pump. This is the float for the fuel level. Okay, so that's going back in there. I was paying more attention to talking to the camera and less on unscrewing things. There's no innuendo in there. Don't even try to find it. Ooh, someone has been in here before. That screw has been stripped a little bit. I wonder if this fuel pump's ever been replaced. I wonder if someone's already took this tank out. Ugh. That was fun. The moment of truth. What do you look like? You can see this little filter sock is actually torn a little bit. And um, it's got a little bit of sediment collected on the bottom there. Mark 
Toyota Supra pump installed. I like these little spring clips that hold the hose on. I got these little red tabardoodles that you pull off. Just like that. And it locks it in place. I know some of you are probably wondering the flow characteristics of this pump versus the one in the MR2. So on the screen is some science for you. That way you don't think I'm just throwing a random fuel pump in here all willy-nilly. Who came up with willy-nilly anyway? Like, I remember my grandparents saying it, and I always thought it was a cute term. But who came up with that? Everything looks good to go on here. Ready to drop back in there. I shot inside the tank for you with a GoPro, just in case you were wondering. It's actually really clean in there. The question is, is this gonna be harder to reinstall than it was to this, wow, the tornado. Poor Forrester Gump, he's sitting out there getting beat on by the dirt NATO. Okay, so this stuff is going to be really stinky as well. I've never used this before, so let's see if it works. How many of you want to see me do a vlog here soon? Let me know in the comment section below, because I've been thinking about doing one. It's been hard to travel lately, so that's why I haven't gone out to New Jersey to do a video with Liz. And I was thinking about going out to Cali and doing a video with uh, Maddie. I don't know if you know her channel, Evo Maddie. I'll link it on the screen below. But we were talking about hanging out, maybe making a video or two together too, since she lives pretty close. As far as prep work goes for sticking this adhesive on there, I did steam clean and scrub this entire tank. So it is nice and clean. And I'm just kind of winging it and seeing how these things stick. Stuff actually doesn't smell that bad. Hello, so this right here is a kit I got from Twos R Us that uh, lets you rebuild the distributor on this car because you can't buy this from Toyota. They make you buy a whole new distributor. It was like, what, not even two videos ago where I just replaced this cap and rotor and I told you guys about the internal seal leaking on the shaft right on the back side of the cap right here. You can see right here on the inside where the gasket sits, that's oil residue already and I haven't even driven this thing but like 20 miles since doing that cap and rotor. So it needed this. I should be able to take this apart fairly easy. It's just two bolts. I removed the cap with the wire still attached. So it saves me a lot of hassle later. Oof, that's tight. So he said, time to break out the big guns. There we go. Come on. Oh, my GoPro died right when I was trying to film this for you guys. Sorry. It's almost out. That's what he said. GoPro, you had one job to do and you died. Look, I bought a brand new GoPro Hero 8 and just a second ago, I dropped it. See that little nick right next to the lens? So close. I think there's a, yeah, there is. There's a line. There's a cannon plug. Not a cannon plug, I'm not in the Air Force anymore. There's a harness connected to it. I'm getting this on camera to help myself later when I go to put this back in there so I don't do it 180 degrees out. I'm also gonna mark it too. Okay, so the little dot guy is facing up. And magic. My paint marker bled all over. Oh well, at least I know it sides up. A few months back, I replaced the inner O-ring that goes inside here on the shaft. This O-ring right here that I got white paint marker on because I was smart and I put paint marker on top of fresh oil and it got everywhere. It's okay though. This is where it lines up, right like this. Anyway, there's another seal that's inside here and oil is going through the center of the shaft and coming out over here on the sparky electrical side of the bits. That's not where I want oil. I gotta give a big shout out to Charlie. He just swung by and dropped off these lines that he repaired for me. He fixed where it was cracked and leaking right here, saw they're all back together. And he also completely redid the ends of these lines where they're all bent and mushroomed out. As you can see right now, it looks like brand new again. I'm probably gonna have him in the next video working on the MR2 because I got quite a few little things that I wanna knock out while this is all apart. And I wanna get it all done in the next video. So there would be two of us working on the car just to hammer this out quicker. I have to clean this up real quick before I go any further. I'm not gonna disassemble this while it's dirty. That's just dumb.
that's the best I'm gonna get this I used the harshest chemical I possibly could to clean this thing and I don't have any etching mag wheel cleaner that usually works really good hopefully one day I have my own shop where I'll have like a vapor blaster and a thing to do my own zinc coating and clean up parts like this like a parts washer I don't know In order to disassemble this to get to the bearing and the seal, I need to knock this pin out, but I don't have anything that will knock that out. I can't believe that worked. That was so sketchy but it's out. I use this little black screw in the press to get the pin the rest of the way out, but yeah, it is, it's off. That seal right there is the one that is bad and that's where the leak is coming from. Just FYI, I also put a white mark here on the shaft. That way I know which side of the shaft has to be pointing up when I go to reassemble this thing. I'll make it a lot easier. Take the cap off. Does this thing say BJ on it? My cap says BJ. Don't remove. Okay. I can't believe how much oil was leaking through the center of this bearing cartridge. No wonder this thing ran like crap at times. Oh, jeez. Hi, it's the next day, and uh, I have to upload this video in like three hours for you guys. So, I don't have much time, but I got something. I went and bought some mag wheel cleaner to fix the aluminum on this where it's all nasty. And also, my laptop died and screwed my hard drive up, so that's fixing right now. No pressure on trying to get this video up in time. Eh, not bad. Could be better, yeah, but it took 30 minutes just to get it like this, so I'm gonna call that good enough. Time to rebuild you. Look how gross it is inside there. This right here was the seal that was bad, and then here is like the bearing. It's like a rollerblade bearing. This is the part you don't want to screw up. The new oil seal has to be lubricated with assembly lube. I'm just going to use some motor oil. And you want the writing on the seal facing the direction I'm holding this. So they're going to go in like that. I also like to put a little bit of lube in the hole first. God, why do I put myself in these situations? All right, anyway. I'm gonna use this gear wrench bolt biter socket because it's really flat here on the face and it's slightly smaller diameter to tap that in. I also made sure the housing was nice and clean and there was no defects or burrs or anything in there that would cause a future oil leak. As far as the bearing goes, it's pretty simple to install this. It's gonna go directly in here. I may or may not use my press. I'll see how hard it goes in. The only thing you have to make sure is don't put pressure on the center or the inside part of the bearing because you will separate it. Make sure I lube this guy up right here. I decided I'm actually going to use the press to put this bearing in. So I'm gonna use this big socket and slide it over the end so I don't put pressure on this delicate part of the distributor. go. Spins nice and easy. This o-ring right here is actually the one I had already replaced. I thought this was the initial source of the leak, but the kit came with a new one, so I'm going to put another new one in there. This thing is slippery. It won't slide over the shaft. There you go. Before this guy goes back in there, I did a visual inspection on it real quick, and if you see right here on the shaft, there's actually a little wear mark that's scored into it. And I believe the bearing and seal sit somewhere in this area. So that's a little worrisome. And then also, if you look right here, the magnet on this side is cracked. So that might be an issue. You probably noticed at the beginning of the video, the weird sketch I had on my dry erase board. 
There is a purpose for that. This measurement right here is how much the shaft is supposed to stick out in the front right here and you have to press it into place. So that's what I need to do. Make sure it's 29.5 millimeters from this front surface to the very tip of the shaft. Go, go hydraulic press. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, buddy. Ta-da! And there you go, rebuilt distributor. Now there's one last thing that I could mention also. These four screws right here allow you to position this plate that will change the distance from the magnetic tips to this actual gear. So you can use an oscilloscope and touch one of the contacts right here to measure to make sure that it's functioning properly or you can just kind of eyeball it like I'm going to and uh, hope for the best. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna edit it right now so you can watch it, but you're already watching it, so it's pointless for me to say that. I'm just talking to myself. I'm really hungry. The next video, the fuel tank will go in. And maybe I'll start it. I should be able to. Okay, bye.